Joe Blasco back with you here and with Judith Chapman, the star of The Young and Restless. And this has been a fantastic experience. I have having so much fun. So Every let's not stop. Every actress in town is going to want to come on here <laughs> and, and get makeup tips. Thank <laughs> you, How sweetheart. Do 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 We're getting more makeup tips from you than, <laughs> than I'm giving them. I'll tell you what, I have a couple questions here I'd like right. to ask you. That first, I would like to talk about the vineyard. The Tuscan Grill. Tell us yes. all about this. Well, in my other, other, other life, yeah. <laughs> through teaching. How after, many lives um, you yeah. have. So the, that's what I say. Who is Judith Chapman? Uh, yes. Now Judith Chapman, restaurateur. Actually, James, my other half, we've been together about 16 years next month, I think. Um, he's been a lifelong restaurateur in the desert. He's had, this is his third restaurant. And I've helped him, but this is his latest creation, which we've had for a little over a year now. The, it, we had world cuisine before, and James before I went back to work full time. But now we've gone strictly Italian, so and it's yes. really good Italian. We make all our pastas in house, all of our pizzas, all our focaccias, everything, everything, everything is made. No, nothing is brought in. Everything's made now, in house. Is James Italian? James is not Italian. He's Irish and German as the day is long. But we love it. Yes. The entire Mediterranean. People say, yes. "What's your favorite?" food and I say the entire Mediterranean yeah. but we had he had been doing world cuisine before anybody else was but he lived in India as a young hippie now he's an old hippie <laughs> but Indian curries were one of our house specialty specialties and the place was filled mm. with Buddhas and masks and ornamental it. things and wild architecture from the previous thing and about a year and a half ago I went I'm done I said so retire no I'm going to, we're going to strip the place down, but we, when we moved into this location, we made beautiful arched, big, thick walls yes. and beam ceilings and stone floors, perfect for a Tuscan villa. So we had uh, Gianni, Gianni, who came over from London, had two Italian restaurants and was tired of the cold, came over and helped us get it started, but James puts his own touch on everything. So he, I, I talked to him a couple of nights ago, and we had a very, very busy, he said he was in the, in the restaurant, or in the kitchen, expediting, making sure everything was going out, right on time. And it's just very exciting. Nope. It's delicious. We have a wine cellar, award-winning awesome. wine cellar, and these big, long wooden tables, and it's just, bring on the food. I love it. You I know, know what? We're fun. Here's to the, the Tuscan. Here's to the Tuscan Grill. Here's to you and your new ventures. And, and thank you for, for coming on the show. I thank you. And to our viewers, mm. worldwide. Cheers, cheers, cheers. You know, this is so exciting. The Vineyard Tuscan Grill, the Vineyard Tuscan Grill is in Palm Springs. Palm Springs, right? And where in exactly Springs. in Palm Springs is it located? Well, if you, uh, not to promote other restaurants, but why not? It's right on Palm Canyon, mm -hmm. uh, behind LG's Steakhouse. Oh yeah. But recessed in the Vineyard Courtyard, yes. behind a beautiful fountain, and where the big yes. wall, um, big a huge building behind it. But we've stoned the outside of the wall yes. and sponged the walls terracotta. Fabulous. So we're we're hidden yes. away from the hustle and the bustle of Palm Very Canyon. Very exclusive. Very exclusive. I been there for 13 it. years. We're going to we're going to we're going to come visit. Please MUA do. TV. Can, is it all right if we bring a camera crew? Please down? do. Would, Please would do. Fun? We've had lots of camera crews. We'll bring Kelsey. Kelsey would Kelsey just loves to eat. Love it. We do, we do marathon <laughs> Boy, lunches. Boy, does she. <laughs> we, I know, I know. So do I. We do marathon lunches. It's like, okay, let's start with a little of this, we do a little antipasti, a little yeah. this, a little more wine, a little white wine, a little red wine, a little pizza, a little ravioli. I love it. A little it. lamb chop. That's what I had last Saturday night. I was in there and I said, I don't want the potatoes. I don't want any sides. I just want a platter of lamb chops. Oh, my favorite. And then bring out the whole grilled shrimps, mm. smothered in herbed oil with the heads on and the whole thing. God. I'm getting hungry. We're going to have to I stop know. tape any second. Okay, this and is. Lots the, of Prosecco. The, the of <laughs> yes. The Vineyard. The Vineyard Tuscan Grill in Palm Springs. We're going to have the uh, address up for I you. I wait. I bust tables. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna. I, I believe it. I, I believe you. That, that's another life. We're gonna have the address up for you, so that when you're in Palm Springs, you're definitely gonna want to visit Please the Vineyard do. Tuscan Please Grill. Do. And tell them you heard about it on MUA. TV. MUA TV. That's right. All right. Go here. Go say hi to James. He's usually in the wine cellar. Who is your makeup artist at CBS? Patty Denny is the head makeup artist at Young and the Restless and has been there for many, many years. She yes. actually started doing body makeup. She actually, before that, before she went into show business, she was a manicurist. Really? So she has really worked her way up. And she and I, she has done so many special effects on the show. And I've watched her over the years. She did a beautiful special effect on me. A few years ago, I'd done something very naughty and tainted this yes. face cream. And I put it on so I would have this burn. But can you imagine, I mean, I'm not sure what you use for, um, to make the burn the and the blister. Yes. 
I was in awe. She used white sesame seeds oh my God. and attached them with a little bit of glue or whatever adhesive, yes. white sesame seeds, and it looked completely blistered with, with the red and the stippling and everything else. That's a great technique. Isn't that brilliant? And so every day I said, that would fall on my face and I'd eat them. <laughs> you know what? I <laughs> Well, it's see, the, the sesame seeds would make, they, they would dissimulate tiny blisters. Tiny blisters. What a great Isn't idea. Isn't that interesting? I said, Patty, And benign, where you... benign. It's not like you're working. Oh, just, no, no, no. All Completely. this plastic no, and goo. nothing. But yeah. so she, the thing she has come up with, and that's just one that she came up with for me, with these, these right. little uh, sesame seeds. And on camera, seeds. it, it, and it just it looked brilliant. It looked brilliant. Oh, terrific. Like we have to have uh, Patty bird. come on as a guest. Please do. Please Patty, do. if you're watching, Patty Denny. you know you're going to be on as a guest. Emmy wonderful, TV. Wonderful, From CBS, Young and the Restless. Emmy winning. Emmy yes. winning. And um, you mentioned, and I cannot... I, I, I cannot skip this. Okay. The spaghetti westerns. Oh, back to the spaghetti westerns. Well, tell me I about such the spaghetti a westerns. Baby, well, it's actually a very cute story. Did they dub your voice? Uh, they did. They did. They did. Um, the 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 director was the producers and directors were um, Italian and yes. Spanish. We shot it in Spain. I was living. Uh, my family was stationed in Madrid. And uh, I had just started school. So I'm, I was a freshman in high school. No, I was going to be a sophomore in high school. I was a sophomore in high school. So I'm auditioning for the cheerleading squad. And all of a sudden, my sister calls, because I'd started doing commercials already. My sister calls and said, they have this little part in this spaghetti western. It's sort of a seven brides for seven brothers story. Right. And you'd play the youngest sister. And it's just, a, you know, it's just a few days' work. So my mother said, OK, skip school <laughs> for a week. Well, about two weeks into it, my father gets, my mother gets a call from the school and they say, Mrs. Shepard, my family name is Shepard, they said, where is Judy? Well, she's out making this movie. And they go, no, it's not <laughs> acceptable. Long story short, the base commander, the principal of the school, the heffy of production, the chief of production for this film company, my sister translating, all get together and say, okay, you're, my father could be court martial for having me out of school during this <laughs> film. The school's going to throw me out. The pr production is company is threatening to sue my parents for $100,000, which was a huge amount of money in that day, uh, because they'd done premier planas. They'd already done close-ups yes, of yes, me yes. if I didn't finish the film. <laughs> so they'd have to reshoot all this stuff. So the deal was they, it, the production company enrolled me in a nice little convent school in Madrid that, of course, I would attend when I wasn't Film. No, of course, way. never saw day oh. one. Went back to <laughs> the filming took six weeks. Got back into school the middle of October. Needless to say, I never became a cheerleader. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! A cheerleader, and then but went back for midterm exams and still got straight A's. What? But the school said if I ever missed another day of, of, of school for yes. work, to yes. go work, I would be put back a year, and I'm a sophomore in high school. So I would come home from school, and, uh, and that's what I was telling you earlier. My sister would say, oh, because Madrid, you shoot, you work, they take a big siesta, and they work till 10 o'clock right, at night. Right, right, okay, right, right. you've got to go to this location. You're shooting this commercial tonight. And I'm like, I don't want to. I want to go to the teen club and play with my friends. If you don't do this job, you'll never work in the industry again. So I'd take a tag. Taxi and um, go to uh, go to uh, Madrid and work till ten o'clock at night and come home and go to school. It's the next amazing day. how they work. It's a completely different. Oh, it's completely work different. I mean, here I mean, maybe at fourteen, I would have a nurse and a teacher, right, and, and, teacher, and it's exactly, like just go do exactly. it. So very different world. But when I was or doing the film, oh, absolutely, a double. <laughs> no. God, and let somebody else do it, please. <laughs> but I, when uh, when the director sent a car for me every day that I was on the film. And, uh, and, uh, and it was so cold and we were shooting out on location. This you would never see, but being Spain, he would have this hot milk and put this little bit of brandy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> At 8 o'clock in the morning, 9 o'clock in the morning. It was just so cold. It's like, mmm. But I got one of the big... <laughs> I got, the makeup, I got the makeup artist in so much. I should have had that champagne. <laughs> and it was only one sip. That's right. Here, I honey, do. have another. No. <laughs> Sorry, I haven't thought about these stories in so long. Joe. But I got the makeup artist in so much trouble because the older sisters were all these voluptuous Italian babes. And they had the trick. We all had these bright red wigs. And they would pull the face and oh, yes. lift the yeah. thing and pull these things back. And I'm 14. And I'm like... 
ooh. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd put these big wag wigs on so they'd be like this. But they had all this great makeup and these yes. big false eyelashes. Yes. And I, so between takes one time, I went over and I'm putting all this black eyeliner on my eyes and I go on set and of course the director sees me on camera and he's about ready to fit to be tied. <laughs> what happened to her? Why did she get all this makeup? And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and the poor makeup artist <laughs> was going it's to get hiding. almost got him fired. Uh, <laughs> so I had to learn. What a great Oh, it's experience. just a great, what a I mean, what, start. going in top of the, uh, um, on top of the train shooting the bad guys with you know rifles i mean it's a kid's dream ah, that's amazing you know i just to begin a career that way you know no wonder you have the passion that you oh have. it's just so I good mean, that was like giving you a, sh a, a shot of adrenaline right then and there well this is the movie business absolutely but even, even as, yeah. as well as that but my i'm so grateful that my parents weren't typical military people they're yeah. both extremely artistic and thank god yeah. they're still with me but uh, when we lived before we lived in Spain, we lived in England. Yes. So and it, when I, I went to English boarding school, I was okay. a day student. But uh, into being, but we would travel every summer, yes. and Daddy would get us out of school. And my two older sisters, one was in finishing school in Weybridge and Surrey, and the other one was in, you know, ended up in an American high school. But we would travel around Europe. So I saw my first Shakespearean play in London. I oh, saw wonderful. Marcel Marceau oh. in Paris. Oh my God! And I saw my first opera. Aida in Rome mm. at the Baths of the Caracalla. I don't think I had a choice. <laughs> it oh, was amazing. I know. I know. It was and it's like ah, oh, this huge world and yeah. parents who said, "Oh, you got a film? Okay, yeah, go do yeah. it. Skip school. What yeah. the heck?" Yeah, we were just discussing Marcel Marceau oh. today, and we were we were uh, trying to decide if he actually invented the art of mime. And, and do, you, do you know? No. I, I don't believe so. I don't think so. I think it is a much older art form. I think yes. he, he is the one who just who really, really brought, brought it to the, it the forefront. The forefront. Absolutely. Exactly. exactly. Yes. But you think of Kabuki, you think of oh, yeah, the Japanese yeah, yeah. theater, Absolutely. talk about the makeup. Yes, the makeup. yes. But um, um, no, I, I think, but God bless him, but to have that oh, opportunity fantastic. to see him. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, when, you, when, you're, when you see a makeup artist, not necessarily Patty, let's say before mm -hmm. Patty, doing something to you that you disagree with. Yeah. How do you handle that? As tactfully as possible and diplomatically as possible. And again, just saying, I've been working with this face a really long mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And if there's resistance, and once in a while there is, most people are really unless they've just got an ax to grind and an ego to prove and right, put right. out there, uh, they are pretty receptive. But uh, one example, I, my eye, I have very large eyes, as yes. you said, and they're quite set apart. Yes. Most makeup artists want to do this, right. to that, open up the face, to open up the eyes. And mm. that does not work for no. me because what happens, and I've got a little nose, I mean, it's not that I have a big nose or anything, but it tends to flatten my nose and mm -hmm. the bridge of my nose mm -hmm. out, which I think for me is unattractive. So I'm always encouraging them, please, can I just take, like, go like this with my penis yes. and go like this and yes. do little dots. And so it deepens the bridge shading. of my nose and shading. shading. Mm -hmm. And so that works for me. So it's yeah. like, please, these are the tricks that I've found. My yes. mouth, I have a very small mouth. I've never yes. wanted to have injections to plump it up, at least not yet. I don't <laughs> think I will ever do it. No. But uh, but I my mouth has a tend to, tends to curve down, which I think can bring a face down. Mm -hmm. So when not today necessarily, but when I'm doing Gloria or any character, I tend to extend the lip liner just a, a touch, uh, not necessarily outside, but just elongating yes. the upper lip, yes. and that just full makes my lips a little Opens bit fuller it, yes. to balance out. Because I had a wonderful yeah. makeup artist when I was on Days of Our Lives many years ago, Lucia Bianca who I guess is still mm -hmm. around, but she said, Judith, you got these big eyes. Never go on set. Never try to act without lips on. So, you know, yeah. because I do have a small mouth, so yeah. to making a little bit of a adjustments yes. to have yeah. a balance there. Yes. But 90%. But if, as I said, this one guy who cut my eyebrows off. No good, no good. And the guy who was smoking. You're, 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 you're absolutely, <laughs> you're right with the shading here. Mm -hmm. This is something that I was taught early on at, at ABC television mm -hmm. by Rudy Horvatish. And, uh, and the, the interesting thing that, that he taught was is that he would take, it was with pancake, right? It was, sure. a, it was a dark, dark brown pancake, tan, brown tan. And he would draw this way, 
Yes, straight exactly. Down. But you know what? Instead of coming straight down, they would come to a point here. And I said, well, really, doesn't that look unnatural on camera? He says, no, you go out and look at it. And what happens is, is the light, you, you bring the shading to a mm -hmm. point right here, but the light, when it hits this area here, obliterates the point. But the shading is intense, so intense on the sides that it's, it just perfectly sculpts the nose. Exactly. And then all of this is sculpted beautifully into the brow. And I find also, it's, it's just almost an instant little facelift. Yeah, Because absolutely. it just lifts it, lift, it lifts doing that it. contouring into the brow, and it just lifts everything. And to highlight yes. this area right Problem. here between no. the eyes. You One see? of my tricks. Because One you've of my got, tricks. You've got, you're, you, have the, you have the forehead plane, mm -hmm. you have the orbital plane, the nasal plane. The, the, in doing an aging makeup, we, we try to create a, uh, a demarcation line between each of the planes. And this is the demarcation line between the forehead and the nasal plane. So when we want to age someone, we darken this area, hmm. you see, to, 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 to break it up, to make mm -hmm. it harsh. But in rejuvenation makeup, or to make it more flattering, see, you don't even have a depression there. But, but by highlighting this area right here, it gives a continuous, almost like a Greek sculpture. Yes, an aquiline like a, nose. Exactly, aquiline. And, and it, it's just straight from the, from the forehead down onto the nose. And it's, it's, it it's lifts the mm -hmm. face. Exactly. It's beautiful. It yeah, works absolutely. For me. You have perfect, yeah. the perfect structure for that yeah. as well. Very good. Now, you were, for a while, a director as well. Oh, I, well, I, I like to think that I still am. I just my most recent directing uh, venture was just last January. Oh, you, oh uh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Oh, no, no, that's I, I wasn't that's aware right. of that. No, no, no. But I do. I love directing primarily, primarily um, yes. um, um, stage, of course. Excellent. But Excellent. I had a, pre was presented with a very um, challenge, interesting challenge um, uh, right before I started Young and the Restless. I directed Jekyll and Hyde, the musical. Oh. And Where was this? I, this was in Palm Springs, in Palm the Palm wonderful 250-seat theater, yes, uh, um, yes. Equity Theater, yes. and the brilliant uh, New York performer, Chris Saunders, who came out and did my Jekyll and Hyde. But I had done a lot of directing, everything from Equus to Born Yesterday, and I was asked to do this musical, and I never directed a musical. I've done them, or I, I get to go in the background. I, I don't, I don't, I'm not up front. But, um, but the challenge there was I, and I looked at, uh, and I know David, so that I'm not being unkind, but David Hasselhoff did a production of Young, uh, 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 um, Jekyll and Hyde Jekyll on Broadway. And Hyde. Yeah. But it was very brightly lit. Mm. When the young prostitutes, when Hyde kills the young prostitutes, she's all dressed in white, there wasn't a drop of blood, mm. there was no sex, there was no gore, there was nothing, and he didn't do anything. When he transforms into, from Jekyll into Hyde, he's just like, okay, I'm Jekyll, now I'm Hyde. It was very uninteresting for me. Yeah. And I told, and I saw David uh, after, and I said, you know, I did a production, I think mine was better, because I, <laughs> it was far more dramatic. So I told Chris, and he said, but at first when he's transforming from Jekyll into Hyde, and he's going, I said, no, I want to see that huge physical, agonizing, yes. gut-wrenching, you're going through this yes. metamorphosis. Like and then you're gonna, yes, 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 yes. Rah, rah, rah. yes. But one of my challenges, I wanted him to physically turn into Mr. Hyde on stage. Oh, so he had a long wig on with a pony, you know, a, a ribbon in his hair. So his um, lab was upstage. So at one point, when he's after he's injected himself, yes. I had his huge long rolled needles. Rah, rah, rah. And so I had him like convulsing, doing all this convulsing. And then placed on the lab counter was a palettes of, of, of makeup, just a, a browns, you yeah. know, just a, yeah. and so it, it got him to pull out like he's wrenching, pulling out the thing, and then taking his fingers and just ripping dark all down his face yeah. and then into his, yes, under his yes, cheekbones, yes, yes, and yes. then turning into the camera. Yes. And taking and, the ponytail. Uh, yes, of course, Letting so his hair hair's fall. all here. Yes. And of course, it's very dark, and yeah. I kept it very dark. So, but to have him transform right there in front of the audience. Amazing. And so then, in the second act, when he goes and kills the young prostitute that he's befriended as, as uh, Dr. Jekyll as well, but I wanted, instead of just him stabbing her, I wanted him facing the audience. The audience is you, and he's up behind her and hanging over, and he slits her throat like this. I had the actress see, put her hand over. She'd palmed a couple of squibs, yes. and then clutching it so they would burst, blood coming through her fingers, and then so the line of the knife, and then rolling down her neck. Yes. Oh, Every amazing. single performance, and it was just, and the audience is like, oh my God, That's they riveting. actually did that. 
And, yeah. uh, you know, so you, it, you know, no guts, no glory. Absolutely. I mean, try it. Oh, try yeah. it. Try it. Try it. You went for it all well, the way. Absolutely. You know who did that also on film? Similar, similar to that was John Barrymore. He actually changed physically. It was all performance. Oh, yes. Oh, know, yes. In the, in oh, the film. yes. Well, I would have loved to have seen oh, that. Oh, it was a... It was a and you I, did this in Palm Springs. I did this in Palm Springs. I've been living there, so I've done a lot of work at this... But they bring yes. actors in from L.A. They bring actors in from New yes, York. Yes, I mean, really, really high-quality stuff. Yes. And, uh, and so I've directed... Now, you're still directing. I am still directing. Well, I, the last thing I directed about a year ago, I'm involved with a the theater here in town now, and I was just out quite late at their newest production. But uh, my friend John Flynn, who founded this theater, was also on the board of Tim Robbins' group, the Actors Gang. Yes. And about a year ago, in August, he said, they're doing a, uh, a stage production of the... Uh, stage reading of The Trial of the Catonsville Nine, all-star lineup, Martin Sheen, Catherine Mannheim, Sandra Oh, Neil Patrick Harris, Amazing. Beau Bridges, Tim Robbins, wow. la di da di da um, Carradine, Keith Carradine, wow. David, Keith Carradine. And I'm sitting in the second row center. I immediately call and get two tickets. And my friend John ended up going with me. And I didn't know that he was on the board at that point. And this guy sits in front of us who apparently knows Father Dan. It's about a group of priests, nuns, activists who burned draft cards in the late 60s and all went to jail, went underground. But Father Daniel Berrigan, Philip Berrigan, his Jesuit priest brother, Daniel wrote this, screen, or wrote this transcript or this play based on the transcripts of the trial. Yes. They did this as a fundraiser for the Actors Gang. And I'm talking to Tim Robbins, who's very tall. I sort of muscled my way up to, at the reception after, and I said, Tim, I'm going to do the same darn thing what I'm going to do an all-star soap opera cast. So I got organized all of my Emmy-winning co-stars from The Young and the Restless, all my children, uh, General Hospital, to come down to Palm Springs, very difficult rehearsing, uh, for a one-night theater event to raise money for Kiva.org mm -hmm. that makes microloans to people around the world, which they do repay. And so we bought pigs in Cambodia and then opened banks or uh, bakeries in Peru, cows in Ab Azerbaijan, everything. But the thing is, it was so completely sold out. We did an encore performance on Sunday, and people came from as far away as Toronto, Canada, oh New York City, the daughter of two of the original Catonsville Nine, um, got in touch with me on my website and said, my parents were two of the original Catonsville Nine. I invited her to come uh, as my guest. Her mother had been a nun. Her father had been a priest. They both left their orders. They had only been married for less than a year when they burned these draft cards. Both had to go to jail. But I told Tim Robbins, I said, I'm going to do the same damn thing. I produced it. I directed it. I played the prosecutor. And we raised so much money, and we're still buying all these making loans Amazing. to people around the world. That's so that, that was my last what directing is, project. What is your, that, that and, is but incredible. to get soap actors to give up their eyelashes <laughs> and to and who are all, and actresses, my pet peeve on actresses on anything is when they're always doing this with their hair. And I told this one actress who is, is quite notorious for always putting her hair behind, I said, if I see you on stage, put your hair behind your ears once. Everything goes to you and it negates the entire production. I said, I don't want any, I can, you can do some bass, but I said, you were a former nun, you were lay people, this is not a glam thing, mm -hmm. just simple attire, and they all just were stellar. Mm -hmm. I see a little And even I got a t email from Tim said, you really are a rock star, you made it happen. Absolutely. What is your, your e can, can we give your website address? Oh, actually, judithchapman.com. Judithchapman.com. Judith Chapman. Judith Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, lots of stuff. And there's stuff, uh, some stuff from so the, some of the shows that Joe and I are talking about, uh, because a couple, uh, year and a half ago I received, a, supposedly, a Lifetime Emmy. <laughs> for my 25 <laughs> years in the business, a little bit longer, but of which I received. And so I got to go through a lot of these old things, such as the yes. MacGyver and this ancient makeup, and working with Robert Lansing from you know 25 oh years, my. 30 years ago, doing these films when I was such a Robert kid. Robert Lansing, and the 4D this, man, do you remember but, yeah. that? Do you remember that? I oh know, my I God, am but, I dating but, myself? But, um, but uh, leave both of us. <laughs> but, uh, but putting together a five-minute video to play and going over some of this stuff and all the old Universal shows yes. and Bill Bixby and, and Michael Landon and Angela. And yes. Been Angela Lansbury. God, I love her. She loved me. I, she worked, she, I worked with her five times. I worked with her one time. I did her makeup for the Julie Andrews Hour. Mm -hmm. And uh, Joe Carnzano from New York was doing Julie, and I was doing everyone else on the cast. 
and she was so sweet, so, so remarkable, gracious. unbelievable. I was so yes. lucky to work that show. Oh, because I worked so, with so, so many, many shows. I mean, the all Carol the that show, all oh. the people that came You're in right. and out of that show. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna interview you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Wouldn't she be terrific as an interviewer? Thank you. We, sh we should give you your well, own you show know, right here gift. on MUA TV. Hello, hello. We both have, <laughs> we both on. We both have a gift for death. <laughs> Don't we, though? Oh, my God. Uh, let, me, let me ask you. Let's talk about, we've been talking about makeup, makeup, makeup. makeup? Let's talk about hair. Oh. Do, do, you, do you have your own hairstylist that you bring in from a salon, or do you use the, the hairstylist I, I at the used, studio? I use, I use the hair, from Young and the Restless, I use the hairdressers at the studio. I worked when I do photo shoots. Kelsey's never available. So I have a wonderful guy, Jeff Jones, that I've been working quite extensively with lately, who's great at hair. Now mm -hmm. I know Travis, so I've got him in my computer index. Um, but uh, I have very fine hair. Yes, you do. I wear, I it's, wear it's hats. It's lovely, though. I wear hats most nice. of the time because, mm -hmm. again, I can't be bothered when I'm off camera. Just keep mm -hmm. it simple, keep it basic. Mm -hmm. But when I do a photo shoot, when I'm doing a big glam makeup, yes. I yes. want every outfit to have a different hairstyle. Yes. And so I'll go, And but I am so creative, uh, arrogantly I say, but I have ideas. So it's like, work with me and let's do this yeah, and yeah, maybe absolutely. we'll do this. And uh, so th I have great fun with it. Yeah, well, it's part of the three concepts of, of image. Absolutely. The, the makeup, the hair, the wardrobe. Uh, absolutely. They should always be different. Absolutely. They should always absolutely. work with, with each other. I know. I know. So it's it's yep. not my forte having great hair and this big mound of hair, right. but uh, to make it work and make it behave and mm -hmm, spray mm -hmm, it and, mm -hmm. and get a different look mm -hmm. for a, a different thing. And Gloria <laughs> has big hair. Gloria, uh, in fact, I got a note the other day from the producers because I've been off for a few weeks. My, my roller coaster had gone down a little bit, so I've had a few weeks off. And, um, uh, in you need August, the rest. And, yeah, I know, I know. So, but I decided, I'm, you know, in not doing the big poofy hair and the blue eye shadow and the purple shadow, <laughs> I said, I want to relax my hair. I actually got a note from the producers and the first time in four years said, poofy up the hair a little more. It's, it, it's, 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 it's Glory's trademark. So, I love it. so love that poofy hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do they use? Do they use curling irons? What works for me are Velcro. Velcro. Oh, the Velcro, Velcro rollers. The yeah. old-fashioned Velcro fast. curling. It's fast. The uh, the the uh, hot curlers. It just makes my hair limp. Yeah. I don't get. It'll the body. dry your hair out and, too. And, and your hair's brutal. a little fine. You're very saying. fine. Very That's fine. But I put a good moussey or volumizer <laughs> in it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they use lots of different things, but uh, it, depending on how long my day is, I say don't use the super glue hair spray. I'm mm -hmm. only going to be here for two scenes, and I'm off for right. a few hours, so I'll come back. But Velcro actually gives me my body. I spray it, and it gives me the lift. So yeah. I actually like Velcro. Yes, interesting. So Very interesting. No hot curlers are a waste. And if I want to do something special, then a little curling iron. But who, who cuts your hair? Who cuts my hair? Again, the salon and, and uh, Michelle at the salon. Michelle. Uh, she and Wendy are the owners. Wendy has the day spa upstairs. Michelle has yes. the salon and nails downstairs. Yes. And uh, Michelle. She's How been wonderful. doing my hair for Yeah, it's years. a very nice cut. Yeah, she just did a yeah, couple it's of very years nice ago. Cut. But, but I don't. If my try to, because my hair gets so brutalized, and so I really try to leave it alone when I'm not working or really condition it, yes. super hyper condition it. But so I just find shorter hair works for me. How do you feel about airbrush makeup? Well, as I, I've only had it done a couple of times. I had it yes. done for the Emmys in New York a few years ago, and I was amazed. I was thinking, this isn't going to give me enough coverage. It, but it really did. Yeah. It really did, and I couldn't believe it mm -hmm. lasted. Uh, but he, something, something happened. I was laughing so hard, I, um, I, I, I teared up, and I started laughing, and it, it made yeah, a big streak. Yeah. So the makeup artist is like, don't do that. Don't laugh. Don't cry. And when you go back to your hotel, yes. be very careful taking a shower. So yeah. it is... You know, if you're having it done, so it, a little high maintenance, but if you're cautious, yeah. And uh, I loved it. I mean, it's just that. Well, it depends on the product. Yes, cream. exactly. It depends on the product because some of them are, sure are water soluble. Them. You see, uh, so that if you cry or you tear or you get water on, it'll spot. And some of them will not move uh, because they set. Mm -hmm. You see, so w once you make a pass with the airbrush, what you've done stays there. It remains there. And, and if you have to go back, God forbid, and touch it up, you can make a mess. So it, it's like first time, you know, it's got to be the right, the right way. But then now there are other products, there are other airbrush materials that are actually like liquid makeup uh -huh. that when you uh -huh. spray it on, you can actually go back in, you can smooth it with your finger, and it will move. Uh -huh. 
You're seeing it gives you a nice working time. I just remembered, actually, Kelsey, <clears throat> uh, uh, your wonderful teacher and producer uh, and my dear friend, I forgot, came over to my house and did uh, for a couple of years ago and airbrushed me for the Emmys. Yes. I've forgotten it, yeah. so I've had it done twice now. Yes, yes. And it's it's stunning. Yes. It's stunning. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Yeah, there, there's so many makeup artists that I are I would not, not know using what it. product she is. She must have used jars. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, we do make a liquid airbrush. Well, it's not really an airbrush a liquid, but it's a liquid that can be used in an airbrush. Mm -hmm. and, but there's so many wonderful products on the market. There's a company called Aircraft, and uh, there, there's so many others. But don't you really have to be conscientious about keeping the nozzle clean? Oh, it has to be clean. It has to, yeah, it, it's a lot of work. Yeah. And sometimes if you don't have the right compressor, it's a lot of noise mm -hmm. also, which can be very disturbing if you're trying to study your script or you know, be, be quiet or have a zen, a zen moment before you go on camera. But it's I about... I would the, not take the time for air <laughs> like on, a, on the Young and the Restless or on any soap opera that I know of. It's like, no, no time. Da, da, da. What Next. about mineral makeup? There's so much about mineral makeup mineral now on makeup. television. It's, and it's one of the actresses on, that I work with on the show, Jess Walton, um, came in raving. She's one of the actresses that really does bring her own makeup. I pretty much go with what they want and then I, I Patty will is more than happy to let me tweak and do so, so make futz with oh there, absolutely yeah, yeah. futz with my eyes. I put my right, little finishing right, touches right, right. on. But Jess came in one day right this was like two or three years ago when I first started on the show. Or three years ago I guess and she is just raving about the mineral makeup and la -de da 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 and I went, you know Jess, I've got really dry skin. I'm mm. not sure all that powder stuff would work or it would just cake and crinkle and she said well I have really oily skin so it really works it for works me. Well, yeah. So but I piqued my curiosity and uh, so I went over to one of the makeup houses and um, or pl places where mm -hmm. they sell all different mm -hmm. kinds of things and I bought the whole line. Right. I bought the tool powders, I bought the brushes, I bought the blush, I bought everything. Got it home, I just, my sink was filthy. I mean, oh, nothing oh, oh, against oh. the mineral makeup. This was the but powder form. But it was form. just the, pow the loose powder right, form. Right, and right. tipping it up and tapping it out. Yeah. I like low maintenance things. Yes. So I found it's still sitting in my closet. Mm. But another product did come out that is uh, called True. That's mm. another mineral makeup, but it's compressed. Yes. It's like a packed powder yes, yes. with the blushes and everything. And they've got a great um, um, uh, liner stuff, uh, powder stuff. So mm -hmm. I do use that. I've got a couple of those products, and I do use mm -hmm. those because I like that matte finish that the, mm -hmm. the minerals give me. Mm -hmm. But I find if I don't use a, 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 a more... Um, not an oil base, but just a more liquidy mm -hmm. foundation, and then I'll sometimes put the minerals on top. Yes, yes. As, a, as, as a, a powder. As a powder. Yes. As a powder. And the minerals. Well, Instead I've... of using a powder puff, I do like that brushed effect. Right, right, exactly. See, and the thing is, is that if you if you analyze makeup, makeup is made up of two parts. There's there's the vehicle, which is the oil and the wax, mm -hmm. right, which is transparent and translucent, gives you no coverage whatsoever. Then you have the pigment, which is colored powders colored pigments. Uh -huh. and, and in a conventional makeup, you have about 25% pigment, 75% waxes and oils. But in a, in a and what I do with in my products is I, I increased the, the pigments way up to 50 to 55% so with only, you know, 45 or so or 50% vehicle waxes mm -hmm. and oils. What they did with mineral makeup is they eliminated the waxes the vehicle, and the oils eliminated completely. eliminated the vehicle. Exactly. So, just so all it is is the pigments. Uh -huh. With, with a few but don't you think that's very drying now? Uh, it can be. They, they, they do use certain chemical components that are dry also, that have a bit of a sheen to them, yeah. that it gives the impression that the skin is dewy okay. and not right. dry. Okay. But mm. it is still dry. Yeah, see, that's what, that was my resistance to it. So I will use it as a right. top right. loose powder or the pressed right. powder. I yeah, and then in defense with, of but, it, with the brush, I do. Exactly. Like. You can moisturize prior to the application. Yeah. Of, oh, that's true. You, you, know, what I mean? yeah, you know what I mean? True. So, you know, it, it depends on how you use it and, and which, which material yeah, it is. I, just you know? got, I got tired of cleaning it, my sink. A, as far as I'm concerned, it's too, it doesn't go on evenly as an airbrush does. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, uh, uh, or creates, it doesn't go on as evenly as uh, a sponge application of high pigmented cream makeup. The type of coverage and the type of evenness of application that's required for a high definition camera. Sure. Sure. But they're marketing it this yeah, way. You yeah. see? I, I think it's you know, I, I, I still think that there are there are things to be learned that we may not be too happy with 
uh, about, the, about the, the, the inhaling of the of the talc yeah. and the other things, but no, still, so they, but they to argue, each his own, yeah, they, they to argue each that, his yeah. Own so we, we we have yet to see. I honestly, I've been using an airbrush, and uh, I've been using aircraft products. I find them to be excellent. And uh, and some of my own liquid products are excellent. You know, they, they work real well. And and uh, and what I do is is that I take a little bit of cotton. You know, it doesn't look too good, but I don't want the actor or the the actor inhaling oh, the fumes. Good, and I don't want to inhale it either. Mm -hmm. So I put a little little and cotton. And I asked them if sure. it's okay. Do you mind if I put some cotton sure. in your nostrils? Sure. Nobody's going to see you. We'll close the door. You know. And so no, so we put, you put it, and they and they, they 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 don't breathe the fumes. But I've walked into some makeup rooms. As a matter of fact, just just three days ago, Travis was doing a makeup at the uh, uh, MUA TV studios in Orlando, and we were doing this zombie for our our Halloween special. Mm -hmm. And I I and I left the room for a little while, and I came back, and I went back, and it was like there was this fog yeah. in the room, and I I yelled at him. I said, "Look what this! Look at this! You're breathing all of this." You know, and uh, you know, and, and you know, these are particles of pigment and talc and whatnot. That's part of all of that, and it's not good because they embed themselves in your lungs. You know, so in that case, I mean, there was so much in the, so mm -hmm. many so much in the particles, particulates in the air that that could have been harmful. But normally they have great ventilating systems right. in the trailers yeah. or in the makeup rooms. But where, aren't they working on a lot of people? Be at the, when they're doing these, because I, you just, re, I, I did a travel show, <laughs> yeah. another one. I did a travel show that I, I didn't produce. I directed and wrote it and started it. But based <laughs> on the book, but we did a segment. There's no end I, to I, this I, lady's I just, creativity. Like, but but we, we did a segment at Not Scary Farm. And I'd forgotten about this because they, and they did airbrushing on me there too. So I've added them three times. Yep. But they put all these prosthetics on me yes, to make yes. me a ghoul yes, at the end yes, of the yes, segment yes. where I'm wandering around yes. for Not Scary But we did this whole segment on Not Scary Farm. But I was, they just had had huge tents, and I loved it because some of these people were coming back year after year after yes. year and getting these ghoul makeup yes. or these w bizarre, wonderful makeups, but the prosthetics. But I remember them airbrushing these people, yes. but I mean, it was just, I mean, dozens of people in these yes. tents, so, yes. and this cloud of stuff. Yes, yeah, and it's not good to agree. I, I don't, personally, I may be wrong, but in, it's my own personal opinion that you should not breathe the fumes when they get to a specific level. You know, and, and there, and there should so. be, and I think it's completely safe if the room is adequately ventilated or if it's done, you know, outdoors, obviously, or if it's done just on prosthetic appliances. And, you know, I use it to color the prosthetic appliances, to yeah. pre-color them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I always use, a, you know, I put cotton or I'll put cotton across my nose and I'll put a particle mask on. So, you know, if, if you're going to be exposed to it for any great length of time, I find that, you know, being safe is better than being sorry down, you know, years from now when Absolutely. the attorneys decide Absolutely. that they're going to go after and, and solicit all of the actors and actresses who have been using airbrush and they're going to say, can I have an, an x-ray of your lungs? Can we see if any of this is accumulated? I agree. The studio liars, you see. So anyway, I, I don't, I don't want to go there, but, no, but it, it's, it's better to be safe than to be sorry. And I think that using cotton and, so, and all is important. Just even talking to you, I'm, I'm remembering more times that I have had it done, but, uh, yeah. but it was, I was so in awe, again, of the prosthetics. Yes. And seeing how this whole production, be it in yes. Orlando at their Halloween um, yes. parties or, or Not Scary Farm, yes. just massive. Yeah. Just massive. It's amazing. And I don't think, I doubt they work, take as much care at Not Scary Farm and making no, these no. delicate little no. pieces. No. I mean, they're pretty much right. blue it all. That's kind of Halloween to... time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, 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 and it's fast. Good. Oh, you bet they do because the people that go there love it. Absolutely. They're, they're passionate about doing it. Mm -hmm. They do it once a year. They yeah. look forward is to there, this. Is there you know? a month-long party? Yeah, it's terrific. We're, we're going to be doing a Halloween special on MUA TV. How great. And I did, and this is, you're going to love this. Talk about passion, craziness. When I was four, 12 and 14, I, I wanted to be a filmmaker. I hadn't yet gotten the bug f just for makeup. I wanted to make films. And I and my friend, Frank Bolkovac, we would, we would trim hedges and mow lawns and get, you know, 50 cents here, 50 cents there, and we would buy little 50-foot 50, 50 reels of 8-millimeter film, and we made two movies. One when I was 12, another when I was 14. I, I wrote them, I directed them, I acted in them, I did the lighting, oh. did the makeup, right? That's so sweet. And so we're, we've got them restored. Oh gosh, that's so great. We've got them restored. The Mad Dr. Roderick, moi, I play twins, right? I kill myself in it. And, 
and, and all and, choked up. Yeah, and, oh, sweetheart. <laughs> See the passion. This is this, I this is what I'm talking Joe, about. I understand. Yes. I understand. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> then when I was 14, we did another one called The Mad Doctor Roderick. Unbelievable. An hour long with a sound stripe, and we're going. We've An got hour. them. We've got them redone. I mean, we've got them completely restored. Oh, we're going to. Stirring. We're going to put a new soundtrack on them and 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 redub the voices that is too and i'm bringing cool. all the kids in that did it originally to redo all of the sound up from pittsburgh pennsylvania we're bringing sure. them down to florida what to do this party that's is going that going to be great and you're not going to want to miss it absolutely and you'll air it here yes we are right here on mua tv don't miss it it's Mr. Velasco's first venture into show <laughs> That's right. I'm ready for my close-up now, Mr. DeMille. <laughs> One more question. Okay. A word of advice from you to our student makeup artists worldwide. Well, we've had an awfully good time here today, so I think the key is follow your passion. Being an avid yoga practitioner, it's always have that, we call it a beginner's mind. Never be too big in your britches that you can't learn something from somebody or see something. And uh, it's just, um, have a good time. Don't follow the dictates of fashion. Follow your own creativity. Yes, so you have to work within the confines of what the job requires, but please let your mind just trip on out there and the possibilities are endless and the whole world is open. And enjoy. That's the key. Thank you, Joe. God bless you. Thank you. God Thank bless you. you. Thank you for being here. Oh, my pleasure. Right. Have fun, y'all. We'll see you soon. And we're going to see you next week right here on MUA-TV. Stay tuned for more makeup and hairstyling right after this.